Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and I love talking about luxury beauty. Today we are going to take a look at the new Bobbi Brown Jade Stone Eyeshadow Palette. So mine did arrive with one broken shade so I pressed that with some alcohol so that's why that looks a little funky. It didn't, I didn't do a, a very clean looking job there <laughs> but this is the palette. You can see we've got these beautiful kind of grungy greens and golds. It is going to be a warmer tone palette with some cool shades in here, but for the most part, this is going to be more of your warmer tone greens. I can never resist a green eyeshadow, so I had to pick this up. And we're going to go ahead and start off with swatches of this. I'm just going to do the top row, left, right, and then the bottom row, left to right. Now these do have names. So this first one here is, so this here is a matte shade and it's going to be more of a taupe followed by more of a metallic shade here. So this first one is called blonde and that is your matte shade. Again, it's really more of a taupe than a blonde in my opinion. Next, we have Highline Shine, which is a metallic shade. This is gold with a little bit of like a citron green in there. So a little greenish yellow mixed with champagne gold, but more of the champagne gold is gonna be your primary shade. Then we have Empire City, which is going to be more of this warmer brown shade here. You can see there is going to be a touch of red in there. And again, that is gonna be a matte. The last three shades for the top row here, we have our namesake shade, Jade Stone. This is a metallic, but you can see it's not as shimmery as this. It is labeled as metallic. I like to consider it more of a soft shimmer. And then we have Buff, which is your matte shade. And you can see this is more of a peachy cream. It's really more of a soft peach. And then the last one here is Champagne Quartz which is a metallic. So you can see compared to these other two metallics that Jade Stone just doesn't have as strong of a shimmer presence. It's a really beautiful like cross between an emerald and a forest green. So it has a little bit more vibrancy than a traditional forest green. And again, not quite as much of that like blue spruce kind of shade. It's really more green than blue here. And then our last shade here, the Champagne Quartz, is going to be more of one of those like orangey golds. So it's like orangey peachy kind of gold shade, but it has that metallic shimmer. So let's look at the second row here. So we're gonna look at this bottom row starting off here. And this first shade is one of the shades I have on my eyes today. So this is Bronze Forest. And you can see this to me reminds me more of like the brownish tree trunks like maybe you have a little bit of moss growing on them so there's a faint touch of green but it's really going to be more of like a rich brown and it's a little bit cooler in tone so that's a metallic then we have cream matte and then this one here is magic which is a metallic shade you can see this is going to be like a softer more yellow version of jade stone but it's a really beautiful shade and it's one of the deeper greens in the palette. And then the last three here, I have to say this more like yellowy green, this is called Electric City and it is a metallic. It's more of a kind of like an antique gold with a very faint touch of a spring green in there. So there is a little green in there, it's not completely yellow. Then we have Rich Caramel, which is a matte. You can see, again, this is going to be a little bit warmer, has a little bit more orange in it. And then the last shade here is Black Chocolate, which is a matte shade. And this is just going to be a deep espresso brown. Not quite as deep as a true espresso, though. It's a little bit lighter than that. More coffee-like. So this is the Jade Stone Palette. And overall, I have to say they have some beautiful colors. So let's talk about this palette while we go through some eye looks here. And I have to say, I've really been having fun playing with this palette. 
So the matte shades in this palette are gonna be more of your traditional powdery matte. There is gonna be powder kick up in the pan. It's a little bit more powdery than some of the more modern matte formulas that we've been seeing that have a little bit more grip on the eyelid. This is more of your traditional powder. They perform really well, they blend out beautifully. And although Bobbi Brown's eyeshadow palettes for me have been like hit or miss, sometimes those mattes are kind of powdery and dry and don't show up that much. These are powdery, but with pigment. So you definitely don't need a lot to get the color in the pan there. And it, you can blend it out if you put too much on or you're trying to blend. So it actually is a very nice formula. I think all of the shades in this particular palette have worked very well for me. The metallic shades are going to be very finely milled. They are still more of a metallic, I, I'm sorry, they are still more of a powdery metallic than some different formulas, but they are not gonna be like a powdery mess. I don't end up with like glitter under my eyes or anything. And honestly, the shimmer on these is really fine. So it's a little bit less shimmery than a metallic from another brand. So these are more of your subtle metallics. They can give you a really light wash, some shimmer. If you wanna pack it on, use a wet brush. It does work very well with that if you would like to use it so that you get something more pigmented. And you can also use your finger for these as well, or a foam tip applicator. Those are all ways to get these to be a little bit more punchy if you want, but we definitely have deeper shades in here. So if you have lighter or fair skin like myself, then if you are not looking to go for a really deep, heavy, smoky eye, then you probably wanna use a fluffier brush to apply these or something uh, with more of a patty motion to get just a little bit less product on there because some of these can be very pigmented, which can be a great thing. And so uh, again, these shimmers though can really help tone that down if you end up using too much of one particular shade. So I really love the way that these interact with each other. And I think the shadows in this palette perform really well. Now, as for the quality of Bobbi Brown shadows, this formula versus those in the Lux formula, I still personally prefer the Lux formula shadows. I find them to just be a little bit better than these, but these are a good quality basic eyeshadow formula and you know, no issues with performance. I have to say that the matte shadows for a wet liner, if you wanna get these wet with either water or some mixing medium, these work really, really well for a liquid eyeliner. And I have to say that they kind of work a little bit better than other matte formulas that I've used from other brands as an eyeliner. They just really make this silky smooth liquid. You can, it, it's just really easy to use and I, really like them for that particular purpose. So I think overall, this is a great you know palette to have if you are interested in these colors. So as for some product details on this palette, the packaging for this is plastic. You have kind of this blue holographic cover. There's another eyeshadow palette in this collection that has a pink cover. I think the actual design of this year's holiday collection is gorgeous. I love the actual colors they use, the reflections and so forth. So it is plastic. One thing to note, and I'm not sure if this is just mine since I did have that broken shade, you have a full size mirror in the front, but mine kind of flips shut on its own. Um, the closure is magnetic. And I have to say when I try to hold the palette open, unless I am actually using my hand to hold the mirror back, mine does kind of flip forward and the palette closes on itself. Now I'm not sure whether or not that issue is something that all of the palettes do or if mine just, something's wrong with the hinge and that's why mine does that since I did have that broken shadow. It's possible there was damage during transit. I ordered my palette from Macy's and I will leave all shopping information down below in the description box. So if you're interested, check that out there. Now, as for some additional details, these shadows are 1.4 grams each for both the matte and the metallic shades and the palette is made in the US. So just something to note there. The palette itself comes with a full-size mirror, palette-size mirror in there with, it does have a mirror sticker on there, which has helped keep it a little clean. 
So overall, I really do like this palette. I think this is a great palette to have kind of on hand, and it does remind me of some other palettes in my collection. So let's go ahead and do some comparisons here. We're gonna start with Chanel 318 Blurry Green. And we're gonna go ahead and look at all four of these shades here. I'm going to put the comparison swatches kind of on the side here so um, we can kind of keep track of what is the Bobbi Brown palette. So you can see here that the shades in Blurry Green, while not dupes, are gonna be very similar to those in the Bobbi Brown palette. And I think they are all great options. I also want to look at the Chanel Le Beige palette in Intense. So we're gonna take a look at this one, and this one's a little bit harder to swatch because the pan sizes are a little, a little big for my fingers, but we're just gonna put this one right down here, vertically here. And those are the first three. And again, you can see that you do have that similar color story, but the Intense palette has more browns than greens in there. So I feel like that's a differentiating factor. And I feel like, you know, the browns here, they're just a little bit more, the reddish ones are a little bit more rich, a little bit deeper. So it's, they're more like complementary palettes than dupes, but color stories are very similar. I feel like the Chanel Blurry Green is a little bit closer though. This is Dior 579 Jungle. And we're going to really just do these bottom three shades here and take a look at these and how they compare. Let me start with this one right here. Thought those might be similar. You can see that these two shades are similar to these two here in the Bobbi Brown. This really deep green though doesn't go with anything here. This almost looks black. It's gonna be a deep green, but it has more blue in it than any of the greens in the Bobbi Brown palette. And then we're gonna take a look at this shade and this shade in the Byredo Metal Boots in the Snow. These are, this is one of my all time favorite palettes. These other shades here are more silvery and blue than anything you're gonna see in the Bobbi Brown. So let's take a look at the Byredo. You can see this one shade here is a duochrome, which, I mean, it's stunning. It's one of my favorites. This one here is gonna be closest to Jade Stone, but it has a bit more blue in it. And it also, it's just gonna be a little bit less shimmery. Uh, it's not quite a matte, but it's more of a matte shade there. That's this one. Next, we have the Vizier Petit Four in Peridot. And I was also gonna swatch the newest green one that Viziar came out with, the uh, this one here, what's this one? Pistache, but honestly, like, I just, it doesn't really, well, let's just swatch it, we can look at it. But the formulas on those, I just don't think are as good. So uh, this here is going to be the Viziar Imperidot, which I think these are fantastic. If you're looking for kind of like a mini version of this Bobbi Brown palette, I think the colors are fairly similar. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit more green than any of the soft greens there. And again, these are all gonna be just, the greens are a little bit brighter, a little bit more vibrant than those in the Bobbi Brown, a little bit less grungy, but your browns are gonna be pretty similar. So you can still come up with some similar looks. So this is the Viziar Pistache. And I mean, we'll swatch this, but I, if you don't already have this, I'd recommend getting either Peridot or the Bobbi Brown because you can see how these just don't swatch as well. Um, they just don't perform as well. So some of the shades there just aren't as great. But you can see this is gonna be more of those softer pastel greens, a little bit more pea spring green. And my last comparison here is the Charlotte Tilbury Rebel Quad. I forget, this I had another name in the past. Uh, I don't remember what that is, but this is going to be a very similar color story. You can see, oh, let me put the fourth shade here, but you don't have quite as much green. It's more of those like grungy browns with a tint of green, and then you have the one green shade. These are gonna be more shimmery than the Bobbi Brown though. So I hope these swatches and comparisons were helpful. 
In summation, this palette does not have a unique color story, but it is really nice to have so many shades in this color story all together in one palette. As you can see, I do have several comparisons with very similar shades in much smaller quads. So I think it is nice to have kind of this extended palette with these colors if those are go-to colors for you. I personally love this type of color story. As for the formula, I don't find anything particularly stellar about this formula. As I mentioned, I do prefer the Bobbi Brown Luxe formula over this more traditional formula. However, they perform really well. They look good. They last all day. I do have some creasing by the very end of the day if it's a long day, but no more so than with any other brand. And, you know, overall, they just perform really well. As I mentioned, I do find that the mattes on these actually work better as a liquid eyeliner than several other brands. Uh, something about that more powdery formula, I think, really lends itself to being used that way. So I think this palette is a win. It's at a good price point. If you can get on sale, even better. But these are great basics to have, a great set to have if those are colors you're interested in. And I have to say I'm very happy that I picked this one up. I think these colors, they're just stunning. And these are today's neutrals, in my opinion. You know, I prefer neutrals with like a hint of like a green or a purple in them versus just the plain browns. So these are kind of like things that I gravitate towards. So a couple other things I wanted to mention about this palette that I really like. I like having half matte and half metallic and having some deeper and lighter shades of each of those formulas because it really makes it a more versatile palette and I really appreciate that. So I think it's a really great palette. You can create light daytime looks as well as darker, smokier nighttime looks. You know, it's just very, very versatile. I love being able to use just some of these dark mattes as an eyeliner and then some of these soft shimmers on the lid. I think it's a really beautiful palette. So I have to say I'm really happy I picked this one up. If these are the kinds of colors that you gravitate towards like I do, this might be one that you're interested in. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks.